This show is part of the Modern Witch Podcast Network. For more shows like it, visit www.modernwitch.com. Ring a ring a widow shins, loop them lightly, widow shins, kilted coats and fleeing hair, three times three. Come or go ye before, come or go ye, if you will not go before, come, let me ring a ring a widow shins, whirl and scurl and widow shins, and they'll take the hindermost, whoever she be. What is that? It's a little bag made from the skin of a toad. Uh, Does it matter? She, she's tampering in dark sided stuff! Yet in our own supremely rational time, there has been a dramatic rebirth of the ancient arts of witchcraft. You're listening to the Modern Witch Podcast with Devin Hunter. Welcome back to another episode of the Modern Witch Podcast. I'm your host, Devin Hunter. It is season 10. I I still cannot believe it. I'm probably good all all of season 10. I'm just going to be like, it's season 10. Um, It's because it's a big deal for me. And it's also a big deal that so many of you are just tuning in and listening. And to see the numbers go up, it's like just amazing. So thank you thank you thank you thank you for telling your friends thank you for giving a crap you are just amazing people uh okay so on today's episode we have the amazing gabriella herstick and gabriella herstick's been around for a minute and she's been somebody i've wanted on the show uh, forever and um i've kept an eye on her for a long time and mostly because she was somebody in the witchcraft writing world who was writing for venues outside of like witches and pagans magazine and and the normal um you know kind of places that you usually see witches writing no gabby was writing for high times magazine um uh, and i think she was she had her own blog that was pretty amazing um she's actually one of our new columnists over at the modern witch blog so i hope that you uh check that out that should go live in just a few weeks i'm really super excited um but she's going to be one of our writers i'm very excited to have her there and have her on the show today da, da, da. okay so gabby wrote um ooh, gabriella 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 wrote uh a modern guide to the ancient craft inner witch a modern guide to the ancient craft um she wrote craft how to be a modern witch uh, she wrote Bewitching the Elements, a guide to empowering yourself through earth, air, fire, water, and spirit. She wrote a book called Embody Your Magic, a guided journal, which is actually really, really cool. We kept it in the store, and I definitely um, was telling like the, the new witches and the people who were wanting uh, not the super scary stuff, which, <laughs> you know... You come into a witchcraft shop, you, you 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 want something that's going to, like we were talking about on the last episode, you want something that's kind of like purple, or you want something that's like black. Um, and uh, so the people who were more into the purple, I would definitely hand them Embody Your Magic as a journal to help get them going and get them started. Lots of cool writing prompts. Uh, it's definitely one of those books that you should give your beginner witch friends, I would say, uh, especially right in the beginning. Now, her latest book is unlike anything she's written. Um, it actually feels like it is her uh, released, unleashed, uncollared, unfiltered in a lot of ways, um, energetically, and it's really badass. Her latest book is called Sacred Sex, uh, The Magic and the Path of the Divine Erotic. Holy crap. Uh, amazing, amazing. So I just was like, well, we have to get you on the show. Um, and apparently she was down with that. So she came on and that's what you, you're listening to now. It's a fantastic episode. So uh, stay tuned. We've got a, a good one today for sure. 
I do also want to remind you that tickets are available now for the official Witches Sabbath, so definitely go to modernwitch.com, uh, check out. We've got some really amazing uh, teachers, including Sarita de Estes there. Um, I'm teaching this year. I'm doing a whole thing on correspondences, and it's it's pretty. It's it's going to be amazing. We're going to have an amazing time. I will have more about that to come uh, in in the next few episodes. But for now, I want to focus on Gabrielle Hurstick because Gabrielle Hurstick. All right, so yeah, so stay tuned. After the break, we will be right back with Gabrielle Hurstick. Um, and I'm just going to keep saying Gabby Hurstick, Gabrielle Hurstick, Gabrielle. Hurstick. She's amazing. Stay tuned. I wanted to have you on forever because I had a crush on you, like as an author, I had a crush on you. It's just, well, in a witch, I have this crush on you that preceded me getting to meet you via the Twitters. And you're one of my favorite Twitter witches. So I just love and adore you. Gabriella Herstek, you are, <laughs> you are, yeah, no, I, I love and adore you. And I'm just, it's fucking awesome to have you here. So fucking welcome welcome to the modern witch podcast i'm blushing i'm blushing through the camera i'm blushing in my heart thank you thank you thank you i feel the same way about you your work is so important and seminal and inspiring oh, well it's gonna be a love fest guys i can already tell so i one of the things that i think drew me to your work in general was that you first of all you're quirky and you're different and you're odd. And I have always <laughs> felt like an outsider as an, as an, like, even amongst other occult authors, I always yeah. feel like I'm a little bit of an outsider or a lot of an outsider. And it took me a long time to just own it and to yeah. just be like, okay, that's fine. This is my thing. And I see you out there just fucking being different and just fucking doing your thing. And your authenticity is infectious. And so I want to start with that. Where does that come from? Because you, I mean, like we talk, like a lot of us talk a talk. You fucking walk this walk. Thank you. Where does that drive for authenticity like come from with you? Thank you so much. Okay, honestly, I first off, I'm thank you. I appreciate that a lot. Um, so I'm very Aquarius. I have my Sun conjunct Venus and my Mars all in Aquarius, and I remember being in probably like elementary school and realizing that I felt different and I realized I could either spend my life trying to be the same as everybody else and be miserable or I could just do my own thing and be my own person and I decided on the latter and it's definitely been a journey but I feel like so I'm an Aquarius and I'm also a twin and I feel like having like a twin and Alex and I, my, my sister who I love, she's my bestie now. Um, we were compared a lot growing up. We looked really different. We're fraternal people would always like compare us to one another. So I think that between those things of just like naturally having that kind of drive to be my own person in my birth chart and being compared to this other person, I really have just always been committed to being myself. Um, my dad is a rabbi. My mom is from the Jewish community in Mexico City. And I spent from 10 to the age of 22 in the Deep South. So I always felt othered. I, My sister and I joke that we felt too Mexican for the Jews and too Jewish for the Mexicans. Like there's this kind of liminality there. And I've known I was a witch since I was like 12. So honestly, like I feel like I didn't really have a choice. Um, I've just always being my own person and honoring that is just is something that's really really important to me um my dad's parents were in the concentration camps i have a lot of family in the holocaust so for me like the life that i have the freedom i have to live this life is a gift and i have just always been really inspired to just be myself it's it's not really something that i think about i just really relish in you know like living what feels right for me and I it's such a gift when people tell me that it inspires them to be themselves um a big part of that for me is self-expression whether it's through glamour and beauty or like my sexual expression or just sharing about my magical practice but um I definitely also felt like othered in the industries that I work in like I've definitely felt like too sexual for the occult community sometimes or like not academic enough or like in like you know kind of just being in that liminal space but um that kind of 
I just, it's just much more fun to just be yourself and not give a fuck what other people think. Honestly, when I was in high school, I was really into this metalcore band that had, they were like this like Guido, they call themselves Guido core. They were like this like metalcore band from Canada with like Italians in them called the band and all ships. I, I still fucking love them. Um, they're not a band anymore, but they have this saying that like they, one of their albums is called giving and giving means not giving a fuck. And when I was like 17, 18, and listening to this band screaming about not giving a fuck, I was like, you know what? I don't want to give a fuck. I don't give a fuck about what other people think of me. And like, it's so cheesy, but like that really just helped me say fuck it. And I shaved off half my hair. I started dressing how I wanted to dress and went to college in South Carolina, decided I was going to pretend I was in New York and just wear what I wanted to wear and be who I wanted to be. And yeah, it served me really well. And I think that, you know, there's a reason that one of the maxims of magic is know thyself because that's part of the great work is recognizing who you are and like living that. And um, it's something I'm really grateful for. I can't imagine like wanting to be anybody else or trying to be anybody else. It's just a waste of time and space, honestly. Yeah, no, absolutely. I God, like so much what you just said resonated on like multiple levels and and i love it because it means that there's like this shared kind of thing that goes on people people don't know you know they don't know what we got to do before we can write that book or or even just to to get to the point where you finish that book you know yeah and um i think our background stories you know for me i I look at myself as like this really fluid person when it comes Mm to my creativity and my spirituality, my occultism is very much driven off of this. Like it, it, initially it was all about survival and trying to get through like weird shitty times as a young mm-hmm. person. And then it was about like, oh, how do I create stability in my life? And yeah. that became the goal. And that was this beautiful thing. And then it was, how do I connect deeper to the divine? Yeah. And, you know, and so it, it unfolds and it's, it's very fluid and whatever I'm into it changes from, mm-hmm. you know, a couple year to couple year. And so my identity, each time I kind of go through a new creative phase, I'm faced with this reconciliation, right? Where I have to go, oh you know, I'm learning this new thing about myself and now I have to integrate that into the system that already exists. And that is where I find I, I don't don't want to say struggle for authenticity, but I I think I struggle to confront that there's a new type, a new layer or new level of authenticity that is required and what that really means. Because as somebody, like I'm a Sag with Pisces moon and Cancer rising. I am super squishy. I am super squishy. And, and so I'm like very sensitive about everything, but this, like the Sag in me is just like, fuck everything, do what you want to do, go be, go Mm -hmm. be whatever. But then these, these other very big parts of me are very concerned about not being loved and not being appreciated and, you know, all of those things. And I've gotten over the need for other people's approval. Thankfully, like that happened. Thank you, Saturn Return. But it, it's, it's the it's the reconciling of the things it's like realizing like oh i you know i wasn't like i was sexually assaulted as a young person i thought i was over it i wasn't over it like i'm in my mid-30s and i'm like actually this thing still kind of bothers me about blah 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 and so i I, and you're just kind of realizing that that healing and that empowerment is a process yeah that was a big thing for me every like my in my meditation two just two weeks ago i had uh, my a spirit come to me and say this is your journey like you're why are you yeah. waiting to start your new journey yeah. you never stopped the journey you were on yeah. holy shit you know big big ah, yeah. the, the beautiful stuff so what what's your process in in discovering mm-hmm. who you are oh that's such a great question um well i love that you pointed out that you know like it's evolving it's fluid and I think that's like such a beautiful part of the spiral dance that we kind of like we grow from things and we come back to them and we realize there's another layer to peel but we're we're a little bit more you know we've grown since the last time we've been in the same place and it just it's never ending you know like the healing doesn't stop it's not like an end point it's a journey but for me my process um I'm really committed to my daily practice I've been meditating every I still feel like I fucking suck at meditation am I bimbo am I an air sign do I have ADHD who knows but um definitely like that commitment to doing my thing every day meditating doing my lesser banishing ritual like that 
I didn't realize how much it was helping me and changing me until we started the pandemic. And I realized that it was such an integral part of like my well-being. Um, but it's since I've started writing books, I started writing books maybe five or so years ago, maybe a little bit more. Um, I feel like whatever I write about, especially since I started writing the book I'm working on now, I stopped this book to write Secret Sex, but I'm working on a book called Goddess Energy about the divine feminine. Um, and it's like, I feel like when I start writing a book or like researching, it becomes this like container that kind of holds my whole life. Like everything I do and everything that I create or everything that inspires me or the books I read or the podcasts I listen to are all like in some way like related to this thing and um that has been really beautiful because it's kind of shifted my life into this like devotional to the goddess or to sacred sexuality or to like whatever it is I'm working on um but yeah my process is is that it's allowing myself to be immersed in whatever I'm experiencing. And as far as like healing, because yeah, for me, witchcraft and magic more, more so like, I would say just like the daily practice and the ritual of coming back to myself more so than like spells and rituals for certain things necessarily are like, that is the process in which I'm able to be with myself. I'm able to do the cord cuttings. I'm able to see what needs to be healed and able to recognize that maybe they're still a little bit farther in the journey than I thought. And I do consider like my, like going to therapy, like cognitive behavioral therapy, part of that practice, like all of those things is alongside, like, um, you know, like going to physical therapy for stuff or like figuring out like my health stuff like that to me is part of the spiritual practice. Um, this year, or I've been working with this, like, I guess container system kind of framework is probably the best word um, inspired by the mythos of Inanna um, as like a way to kind of think of the different parts of myself, which correlates a lot to like the lower middle and higher self, of like my heavenly angelic self, um, Inanna's queen of the heavens, the earth part of that. Cause she's whole, quote, queen of heaven and earth. I kind of think of my body as the earth. And then my underworld self is like the shadow self, like my sexuality kinkiness. And like, I've really been working this year because I've worked a lot with the angelic self. I've worked a lot with my spiritual practice. I've worked a lot with my shadow and my sexuality and that. And like this year, I'm really committed to the earth piece of that and to healing my body. And I made that commitment to myself um, on the winter solstice. And then I got COVID like literally four days later. And I've had like none. It's been the most intense just like year of doctor appointments and like figuring my shit out and like even though that might be you know like I'm not going to the doctor and doing a fucking lesser banishing ritual the pentagram like I'm still going with this commitment and this intention of healing my body of being there for myself and like to me that is part of witchcraft that is part of my magic so I think like that kind of daily practice and that self-awareness and that checking in with myself and my heart alongside the devotion I have to the deities that I, um, I'm pledged to has like, I think that's my process and, um, allowing myself to find, like you mentioned, this fluidity between, you know, this devotion to this ritual every fucking day. And also it's like living my life. Cause when I, when COVID first started, like I was really deep in my studies. Like I was meditating twice a day and like, cause I didn't really, what else could I fucking do besides go on walks? Like I was at home all the time um, and I was writing, but now it's this integration of taking what I've been learning and taking the healing and taking this, you know, devotion to self and to God as like out into the world and being a human again. So um I hope that answered the question. I kind of went all over the place, but for the most no, part, that's perfectly. my process. No, Thank perfectly. You. I know. I first of all, you are not. I mean, I love. I love bantering back about being silly sluts together and all the things. But the <laughs> truth, like, follow us on Twitter for everyone. Seriously, it's fun. But the but you, you're not a bimbo in that sense that like a bimbo has no fucking clue what they're talking about. Thank like, you. Like no, like I just want you to know. Like I love that you have obviously this take on sexuality and you own your sexuality especially in a world where it's being 
so repressed and it's yeah. such a ugh, kind of situation for us. So I love, I like totally love that about you. But I also think, I'm just going to say it, I'm just going to say it, that you probably don't realize how actually deeply intelligent you are and mm -hmm. how you have, like, I love, I love my, my scholarly, which is Matt, my husband, I can't say I'm my husband is, um, he's very scholarly. Like he, he, you could say, you could ask him a question. He could rattle off five books that were written in 1800, but like, he's ridiculous. Storm is a lot like that. I am not, I am a feel my way through shit, psychic <laughs> guy, you know, kind of witch. And I, and I learned a lot and I went and I studied traditions so that I, I could have like, you know, authority and you know, all that stuff. And at the end, none of it mattered because the magic the spirits taught me was actually the most effective yeah. and so that was it so you know so but in that i i can say you know i studied with some really badass people i'm married to a really badass guy my partners are really badass they're very intelligent they're very very smart you are right up there with him the way that you articulate mm -hmm. the way that you are are verbalizing your experience i think was is very is wonderful so i just don't i don't want you to like take yourself i don't want you to put yourself in a to, uh, underestimate your own glory because i think oh, you're fucking God. badass thank you oh I like listening to you like, no, no, no. no seriously though it's it is it's it's hard like i was i was just talking to somebody who's coming onto the network about their own kind of just experience um with other occultists and how it can be really uncomfortable and my whole thing is like you know what listen we are the ones that like the ones who are writing the ones who are podcasting whatever we're the ones having a discussion that we inherited from people who are dead now like that's yeah. it. and someone's gonna get it when we're dead and so we're just lucky to be part of this discussion and part of that our new era is really talking about the way things feel and, and feeling our way through these experiences where before they had to be very you know, structured blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. now we don't have to be that way and i think to really grasp the intensity of the work that we do we have to feel it out yeah you know, or else you're not gonna so i think you're amazing and i Thank think you're, you. you're doing great work yeah. that's to me like that feeling like that's something that is so like you really i i feel what you're saying so deeply i have my I'm a moon in Scorpio and my Mercury in Pisces and Saturn in Pisces. Like I am, I might be Aquarius, but I'm very deeply emotional. And like, I'm also like, I walk the path of the goddess. Like she is who I am in service to. And like, to me, the goddess is imminence. She is not logical. You can, I've said it once. I'll say it again, put it on my grave. You cannot think your way to the goddess. You just can't. You can't think your way to her. You have to fucking feel your way to her. It has to be an embodied experience. And like, I love, I, I, you know, the past maybe four years, I've been studying the Western mysteries. I'm a student of Hermetic Kabbalah. I love it. It's really special to me. And I also recognize that at a certain point, like all that brain stuff, like thinking of all the things, like trying to do the rose cross ritual where you have to make this crazy like weird thing on the like I can't even do it without totally getting out of the feeling aspect of the magic and for me that like that feeling that emotion that like embodiment that's what's magic to me that's what's witchcraft to me and like that's one of the reasons like I love sex magic so much or like just like any form of embodiment practice where I'm moving and I'm feeling and, like yeah I have the structure of the words and like the egregore of the ritual itself and I'm doing these things but like if like I will never be a thelemite first off because I don't ever want to follow like one person and Crowley writing himself as like the master of his religion makes me feel weird so I'm I'm an armchair thelemite or a thelemite adjacent and also it's just like when it's too much like logical written stuff I just am out of it. I can't do it. Like, it's just, I'm like, I, I just, I would, I would go back to school if I wanted to do that share. I'd rather just be like a fucking anarchist academic study what I want to study. And then like, yeah, feel my way through the magic, connect to my heart, like pray, do rituals of dance and kinky shit. Like for me, that feels so much more in alignment with the divine feminine. And it's just, yeah, it's like, you know, I feel like that to me is kind of a dis like what distinguishes like a cultist from witches in one way is like the occultist is so like brainy and to me witchcraft is so connected to the body and the earth and the feral and 
the heart and the soul and all of that, that it's like, you can't, you can't think your way to that. You just can't. No, you're, I, I, I like that. That's a really wonderful way of actually thinking about it. I, you know, I'm trying very hard in my own like little world over here to be like, you know what occultism is I, cause I love other aspects of the occult that aren't witchcraft. Cause I feel like mm -hmm. I'm by default a witch in the way that like by default I'm, I'm just a big mo. And so I feel like I can't not like, I can't not suck dick. I can't not cast a spell. Like it's the same kind <laughs> of like I'm just who I am. But that being said, there's the, there are parts of the occult that I love and adore, but mm -hmm. I don't think a lot of like witches would consider them to be part of the occult because of the way, like when you think of a cult, you think of like a book and you mm -hmm. think of like old white men walking mm -hmm. around in robes and like crazy shit. And I'm like, not, that's not my jam. And that's, that's never, been my, I've, I've tried, I super tried. I, you know, you, we, I dabble in what I can and figure things out and blah, blah, blah. Not my bag. I think it's cool. I think the the drag is amazing, but you know, for me, it's a, I need something else. I need a different, mm -hmm. um, connection point yeah. and i think because i am such a squishy guy that and i've like always been a hardcore goddess devoted person yeah. like i used to own the domain goddessguy.com uh, like yeah that was me um i love you know so i i totally feel what you're saying and i get it i'm but i will say i'm trying to broaden the idea of occultism yeah because yeah. i think people need like scientology technically occultism yeah yeah, I mean, L. Ron Hubbard was fucking doing magic with Jack yeah. Parsons in the desert. Yeah, their was whole like Kalima. their whole like first intro system mm -hmm. is basically just the Lima flipped yep. into yep. self help. That's it. Yep. So, I mean, there's a lot of like if we really wanted to talk about and and I just think occultism. I mean, it is occultist or ugh, occult means mystery, obvi. Yeah, but that's an I I want to tell people over and over and over and over and over and over and over again. The mystery is what you feel your way through. The mystery is what you experience. The mystery is not what you read or yeah. what, something you're going to get in a book, mm -hmm. because all all any of that stuff can do is create a mental construct, if you will, right? A, a little pond, but you still have to go swimming in the pond yeah. to figure out what the hell the mystery actually is. Yeah. Right? And I think we get caught up on stupid things that are reinforced by stupid behavior and um and it is very asinine and ignorant and doesn't let people in to experience certain things so i love that you yeah. are adjacent to thelema i feel that so hardcore because i've wanted to i've come very very close i've been offered several spots especially when, as soon as you get like a book out people are like do you want an initiation so you know that kind of shit happened and i'm like no 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 like i i'm cool reading my having my own interpretation and yeah asking my friends when i need help for something but yeah. i'm with you on that i'm with you yeah on that. i'm definitely an occultist don't get me wrong like i oh, definitely 100%. am yeah. like i claim that word and i love i mean i'm an air sign i love i love books books are one of my happy places any given saturday you can find me at a coffee shop with a my silly little coffee and my silly little book vibing out. Um, and I love that the way that that is its own transmission. And I also think it's like anything going too far in any direction is dangerous. Right. Um, and yeah, I feel like I was going to say something and I forgot, but, uh, I don't remember. It'll come back. Do you, to me eventually. do you know who Michelle Boulanger is? Yes. Okay. So Michelle and I were talking and they had said something that like, just rocked my world which was that in the like 80s and 90s if you uh, if you were coming to witchcraft looking for you know from a place of like feeling things out and you were having psychic experiences that you weren't really appreciated you were kind of made to feel other mm -hmm. and a lot of those people ended up creating what became like the vampire scene and so oh, like michelle's yeah. a vampire yeah but the root of that is really comes from them having just a, a different take on what occult experiences they were yeah. having and then being pushed out because it wasn't, you know, Wiccan enough, basically. Yeah. And so, and as a result, you get, you know, the vampire community that's, that sprang up in the 80s and 90s and still exists today. And so I, th and so to me, that always sticks with me with that idea. And that's yeah. what I was trying to get out of like, no, like occultism, like we're really big and we, we push people into things because they're not this enough. And that's mm -hmm. just like crap. So I don't even identify as pagan, like personally, I don't, yeah. I don't call myself a pagan. Um, I'm a humanist, 
Mm. That's that's my if I have a religion, I, I say I'm a humanist. I'm an ordained minister as a spiritual humanist. Aww. Um but I am but witchcraft is my life. Like this I'm, it's yeah. my lifestyle. I have a I'm devoted to the goddess, like I've got all these things. But I um I think because occultism lets us do that. It lets mm-hmm. us ask our own questions and find our own fucking answers, right? Yeah. And that's so. part of the knowing thyself too, right? It's mm-hmm. like coming you can't come to occultism and also like come at it with this perspective of like I'm gonna do things like there's one way to do it and this is the right way or you're going to set yourself up for disappointment, failure and being too hard on yourself, which so many of us are like, I think that's one of the things like that I really try to emphasize in my work is like, whether you're an occultist or a witch or a magician, whatever you want to use, I use all of those terms to describe myself. Honestly, like your practice should feed into your life. It should be, it should use what's already inspiring you. What's already there. You shouldn't like, have to change your life to fit into your craft it should be something that naturally makes sense for you and like yeah it's it's hard and especially now like there's you know it's I love social media and it's you know but there's always this kind of comparison thing going on and people are like am I doing this right am I not and it's just like that's not the point like there's no right or wrong in any of this and if anybody tells you that there's only one way to do it then they're fucking full of shit because none of us know what we're doing and like none of us know what happened when we die like we can think we do but until we die like we're not gonna know so it's just, it's just a lot like and I I also yeah I, for myself like I love words and being able to describe my practice or like find labels for myself that feel irrelevant for myself is like very liberating obviously like you know confining yourself to any one box can you can outgrow it quickly but like the way that I have come to describe my practice is like, I practice ceremonial erotic witchcraft. Like I practice ceremonial magic. I work within the context of Hermetic Kabbalah. I am a student of the tree of life. I use erotic energy to worship the goddess. And I also practice witchcraft. So like for me, like that's how I would describe it. But like, I've never met anybody else that would use that, which I kind of like. So I think that's also like, like, you don't have to be, like you said, you don't have to be one thing. You can be a pagan witch or you can be uh, a cultist and a witch or you can be neither of those things or all of those things and like as soon as those labels start to feel like oppressive or as soon as they start to feel limiting just let it go because it doesn't fucking matter like what matters is your connection to your path your connection to your magic if it's making you a better person and if it's making your life better like what's the point if witchcraft is not making you a more compassionate connected empathic person like what else matters like beyond that like whatever you can get you know it's like that gets old like you know so that's that's no absolutely i'm 100 i everybody last season on the show had to listen to me talk about like going through this whole my my father died and going through this whole like journey of self-discovery and you know because suddenly you were faced with this thing that witchcraft doesn't train you to understand and process really like death and that's concept and i'm a medium like i talk to dead people for i used to talk to dead people for you know a living and um suddenly i'm in this this space where death was like so close and my connection to my father was always kind of weird and now i had to redefine it it was this whole thing so i went off and studied buddhism and um it was fantastic i i found so much peace I found, and I'm not a Buddhist. I can say yeah. that I'm a I'm a student of Dharma of the yeah. I'm a student of the teachings of Dharma. But I I found so much peace and um, fortitude. I think, and oh, and that was a big yeah. word was fortitude because I realized always gonna always going to uh, have these things happening. Right, this is yeah. the nature of life. You're gonna suffer. You're gonna run into people who are suffering, and you have if you're empathetic in any way, shape, and form, you're gonna feel. So you're going to suffer as, you know, just seeing them suffer. So going through this, you know, that period of my life, I'm so glad I went to the East. And I'm so glad that the that, that it just happened to be that Buddhism, it was so open and so yeah. willing to, you know, Buddhists were willing to talk. And I was able to talk to some, some really incredible people who were very experienced. And um, it was wonderful. It was wonderful. And I'm trying to figure out how can I bring this to people over here in my, in my circle, right? Or in my group, because it's not anyway, it doesn't exist, right? And so, mm-hmm. you know, you saying like, oh, you know, I, I have this, this these words that I use to describe me that nobody else is using. I, I fucking love that. And I, because I think that's the point. And I think if yeah. you, I, what I tell my students 
like advanced, like my advanced students, um, is the whole point of what we do is to go in and cultivate the unspeakable. Mm. And it isn't in a dark way. I mean that in a, the, you can't find words, yeah. right? You can't verbalize this knowing that you have this connection that you have with the spirit or divinity or, mm -hmm. or whatever. And, and so I feel that, and I felt that, that challenge when I went into study the Dharma teachings and try to apply those things to my life. And, um, and again, you know, being faced with that idea of kind of rediscovering yourself and yeah. reconciling things oh, really fantastic. So, so I get it. And I, I think, I don't really care if I know witches are like, Oh my God, I don't give a fuck. I give yeah, no fucks. Cares. I give no fucks. I needed it. It makes me feel, I can sleep at night. I can sleep at night yeah. and I'm not crying and I'm not yeah. sad and I'm not looking at life in a nihilistic way anymore. So I'm <sighs> happy. Must you know what I mean? Yeah. Know. So fuck that. So I, yeah. I think when it, I think we just have this ridiculous limiting time capsule that we put on our our witchcraft and we stay in these these phases that are meant to be in the past they're not meant yeah. to be dug up and opened up and you're not meant to eat the cheetos that you had when you were you know 14 mm. years old like leave it in the fucking can you know so there's just I, I just feel like what i love about your work and the things that you promote and the things that you are developing it all centers around this idea that like from me as an observer i see you on that journey of discovering processing and then the things that work and the things that you're finding empowering bringing to your people yeah. right and yeah. that's what i love because i feel i know this process yeah. i know how hard it is i know how hard it is to do that and be a accountable to a publisher mm -hmm. and you know all of those things and i it's awesome so i I, I, I love that you're saying these things because it's a good reminder for me as I embark on my own, th you know, stuff. Oh. And I think everyone at home is also in it because we've gone through so much. Yeah. We've all oh, gone oh through so God. much, right? Oh, my and God. And as we're yeah. reemerging, who are we now? Yeah. We got to meet ourselves where we are and we don't have to be the same people we were. And like, first off, I love that you have that journey with Buddhism. That's so gorgeous. Last summer, I was taking some classes on like learning more about like the Dakinis who are kind of like the divine feminine principle wisdom keepers in Buddhism and connecting to them. And that's like, you know, I, that's one of the things I love so much about spirituality is like the more you learn about these different traditions, the more you see how we're all doing the kind of the same dance in our own ways and ways that make sense for all of us. And one of the things I love about Buddhism is that, you know, after you do a practice, you, you dedicate it to the liberation of all sentient beings. And like, that's something that I've started to adopt in my witchcraft. Like I'm doing this work for myself, but I'm doing it for the liberation of all sentient beings. Um, and I'm so glad that it's something that's brought you like safety and comfort and support. Like that's what spiritual practice is meant to do, you know, like since the beginning of time to like change our circumstances, to bring us closer to each other, to bring us closer to the divine ourselves, um, and thank you so much for seeing that about my work. Like I never want to share things that don't feel resonant for me. And like, I totally get the being in the stage of evolution and feeling almost beholden to who you once were. That's something that I've like really been not struggling with, but definitely been processing, I guess is a better word. Like when I started writing books, I was really young. I was approached to write my first book and it was Inner Witch, which was craft in the UK. And it's a very like introductory book on witchcraft. And the next book I had was a little bit more in depth with the elements. Um, and like, I, I loved doing that. Like I loved doing the witchcraft 101 stuff. I did it. I started writing in this space like eight years ago, maybe more non-professional, like on my own blog that I used to have. And like, I was writing for Hello Giggles and freelancing and writing before TikTok. So there was, or like social media was doing a ton of stuff. So like I did a lot of the witchcraft 101 stuff and then I stopped liking writing about it. And I realized I love sharing and discussing and teaching and practicing magic that centers the divine feminine that centers sexuality that centers self-expression and like the taboo and like kink and like I I love doing that but obviously like Instagram specifically is not very supportive of any kind of sluttery um Twitter kind of is but TikTok definitely isn't um and I have definitely felt like oh well you know like I feel it's almost like a guilt that I feel for like changing the direction of my work to be more aligned with who I am. And 
you know, like I have to constantly remind myself that like, I'm allowed to do what feels good. And like the things that resonate with me that I have changed who I am, like at a heart level, at like a foundational level or what is going to reach who it needs to reach. And I'm like, even if I don't get as many likes, even if I don't have as many followers, I'm like, I know that the work that I'm doing that feels important for me and sacred to me is going to reach who it's meant to reach. And like that, like giving myself that permission and allowing myself to like change has been really beautiful. Um, I was, I was really stoned a few weeks ago and I unashamedly, it's not even a word. I, without shame, love Evanescence. Amy Lee, we love our goth icon. And I was like listening to them. And there's this one lyric that's, um, what is it? It's, if you love me, let go of me. I won't be held down by who I used to be. And I was just like screaming that. And I was like, wow, like this is it. Like, I don't have to be the same person I was. And in fact, like if you're practicing magic, right, you're going to constantly be changing. You're going to constantly be evolving. It's like the tarot, like you're going to start as a fool and go all the way through the world and come back and start the same journey, but as the magician, and then you're going to go through and start it as the high priestess. And it's like, that's part of it. It's, you know, like the great work is a, a work of alchemy. And that means this transformation. And it's like, you know, we live in a culture that very much doesn't want that. They don't want self-knowledge. They don't want us to be um, sovereign. They don't want us to like know ourselves enough to know our needs, but as life changes and as our experience of life changes as we go through pandemics and wars and all these crazy things like we're gonna shape shift we're gonna evolve and like yeah I think that if our work stays the same then it's like what are you doing it, sh- it shouldn't you know but it's hard to remember <sighs> Hey everyone, thanks for downloading this episode of the Modern Witch Podcast. Uh, I just want to say thank you so much to my Patreon subscribers, to the people who are buying merch. Everyone involved in that type of monetary exchange is helping Modern Witch thrive right now. You're helping us produce new shows. Uh, You're covering the cost of making new shows and bringing them on so that we can highlight new voices in the community. You are making sure that there are people who otherwise wouldn't have a platform are getting a platform, and it's all just really freaking cool. So if you aren't already part of the Patreon, if you aren't already getting one of our subscription boxes uh, where you can get crystals and plants and all kinds of cool things delivered to you every month, uh, you totally should go to modernwitch.com and find out more about that. Uh, And again, we have really great merch. I mean, some really fantastic merch. And it's not just stuff that has like our logo on it. I mean, sure, that exists and you'll look fabulous in it. But there's also plus size dresses. There are all kinds of really beautiful occult and witchy designs, some fun designs for Halloween. It's it's pretty loaded. So go over to modernwitch.com. There are so many ways that you can support us. And don't forget, a lot of our hosts on the network also have their own Patreons and they also have their own websites. So make sure that you also click on their links on our website and go check them out as well. Thank you so much for downloading. Thank you so much for your support. And don't forget to like and subscribe on whatever podcasting platform you grab your podcast from. Uh, Make sure that you give us five stars, please. That really does help. It helps other people know that we are a high quality show um, and that we are producing good content that they might want to listen to as well. So hit that five stars, hit that subscribe button, and we will be in your ears as often as we possibly can. All right, back to the show. I will say that so last year I ended up just like realizing there was a lot of white noise on social media. Like mm-hmm. and it's even worse this year, but like there was so much white noise. There were, everybody was posting like one Oh one memes. Like it was if I every time I opened up any social media, there were like 13 posts about the properties of Rosemary and quartz. <laughs> and I just had this moment where I, and people were telling me, cause you know, I'm going to coaches and people who are like social media experts And they're like, oh, well, yeah, this is what you do if you want to get followers. And I had this moment where I was like, I, I, I can't, I I can't do that. I'm so sorry. I, 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 I'm, I know, no. And because it will, it will, I refuse to create something that I'm not going to get paid for. That's going to drain my soul. Like, I'm just like, that's where I'm at. I'm like, I'm not doing it. Like if you were paying, if I was getting paid to whatever, then it would be going to be a job. It'd be different. I could have a different relationship to it. 
you know, as a designer, that's happened before, whatever. But when it's social media and it's me showing people who I am, a discussion about quartz is not something I want to have. Like, I have this crystal book coming out and I'm already yeah. like, I'm not doing it the way that everybody else has done it. Like, yeah. and it's not offense to anybody else. It's just sat oversaturation. And I don't want to be like everybody yeah. else. And my yeah. take on stuff is not like everybody else. Like, yeah. I have a totally... I have a very witchy take on crystals that isn't super love and light like and that's my and it's great and fantastic you know so i i totally see that in your stuff where it's it's this you're gonna do what you're gonna do you're not going to cater to a, an audience that probably isn't even interested i mean i could see like a 101 b audience being interested in your first two books but i especially with this last book that just came out like holy shit like that is not for <laughs> You know what I mean? Like that is for somebody who's definitely like, no, I need to, to, I need to feel this and own this and love this yeah. and be this. And so it's, it's cool to see your progression as an author and to see you honest. I can see you're like, nope, I am, I am doing me. This is me. Yeah. This is it. This is what you get. You want it, come get it. If you don't go away. And that's just who you are. And it's refreshing. And I, and I'm constantly like telling people like, oh, check out what Gabby's like doing. Gabby's doing amazing shit over there. You're seriously, it's really fucking cool. And I, especially because right now we live in a world where sexuality is under attack. And I mean, it was bad when we were kids and then yeah. it seemed to like get better for a minute, yeah. just a, just a minute. And now okay. here we are yeah. again. And not just the attacks on reproductive health and, and all of those things. I mean, it goes beyond that. It goes yeah. into putting women in their place in the home and turning them into, you know, basically baby factories. And that's your job. And yeah. trans people are just grooming children to molest them. And yeah. horrible attacks on really what to me is, I mean, yeah, sex is adult. Like, let's just say sex is an adult topic when we get into like the nitty gritty stuff like you know i understand that but it's so beautiful yeah and it's so i've been in that i've been in a bad sexual bad sexual more than one bad sexual situation and i've been in some incredibly yeah. amazing sexual yeah. situations and yeah. that were pure and innocent and yeah. sweet and beautiful and so i'm but that's not like the work that i talk about that's yeah. not the person i am as you know with the world but it's who you are. And so I feel like you've got, like, not only are you talking about it, but you're talking about it as somebody with a vagina. And God <laughs> forbid we have somebody with a vagina yeah. talking about sex and liking sex. So what is that like? Like, can we talk about that? Just being not just that authentic self, but going out and talking about the things that you are in a very public way yeah. and being unashamed of loving the way it feels yeah. what is this like because this is this is some powerful shit like it really yeah. truly is no one else is doing this mind <laughs> you. they aren't yeah um it's definitely it's definitely weird like i i mean again like one of the things that's really important to me is just being honest with who i am and i don't want to fucking hide who i am like there is believe me here's the thing like i have a scorpio moon i have a scorpio stellium i'm very open with like who I am and what you're seeing is authentic and in alignment with my truth but you're not seeing everything there is definitely a lot of stuff I keep secret and I like it that way so um you know like just throwing that out there so people don't get it wrong and think I'm like a fucking transparent curtain no there's 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 stuff hidden um but it's definitely weird like Roe versus Wade was overturned like officially overturned like a couple of weeks before my book came out before Sacred Sex came out um and I just was like you know I've I just was it was horrible I mean I live in LA I'm really grateful and lucky but like I grew up in the deep south I still have friends there like it you know it, it definitely impacted me but it made me really thankful to be able to write about this stuff and speak about this stuff and leave classes about this stuff because it's like what you know the conservatives want whatever like it's it's nuanced but like they want us disconnected from our bodies they want us they want uh, to control us and like one of the things that I'm really passionate about when it comes to talking about sexuality and sacred sexuality or a sacred, an intentionally sacred relationship with your sexuality, the decision to make it sacred, honoring it as something that's important to you, that's, that's all you need to make it sacred, is that it is yours. It does not belong to anybody else. It does not have to do with anybody else if you don't want it to. 
And like that connection to your sexual self is like, to me right now, so important because you can't get yourself pregnant. You can't give your, I mean, you could keep giving yourself STDs if you're like using sex toys and not cleaning them. But for the most part, like you are a very safe partner to yourself and having that connection to yourself when people are trying to take it away is so important. Um, and I feel just really grateful to be able to have written that book, but it's definitely weird. Um, I mean, I have like a whole wall of, you know, kinky shit in my room and it's just where the light, like when I take selfies, it's behind me. Cause it's just how the light is in my room. And like, definitely have, you know, like weird experiences on dating apps and shit. But I think at this point in my life, like it's less because I live in LA and because like, I'm part of like the, you know, kink scene here and witch scene here. And like, you know, like I, I'm very, my self-expression is very connected to my sexuality. Like it is kind of, it's a way that I embody that in myself. Um, so people kind of like, I feel like you can like look at me and tell that like, I'm not like a vanilla bitch, which is great. I love that for me. But like, I think what's been weirder as far as like actually like dating and talking about sex is just like not apologizing for my success in general which is something that like as a vagina I definitely like somebody with as a as a vagina as as somebody (laughs) with a vagina um you know is definitely like taught to kind of like you know be like make myself smaller you have to diminish yourself yeah Yeah. don't take up space don't talk yeah absolutely mm -hmm. you know that's why I think that there's such an obsession with skinniness in our culture with women being so small it's like you want to be as little as possible and not have a voice and um you know like I've just gotten to that point where I'm like fuck it if somebody's like threatened by me that's not my fucking fault and like yeah I think that you know like I my relationship to sexuality has evolved a lot. Like I did not do anything until I was 18. Like I like was just like a late bloomer. And then I just like went head first into doing crazy shit, but, um, claiming like, just even just saying like, I'm somebody who loves sex is so like loaded in this culture. And like, I am obsessed with Vivian Westwood. She's why I moved to LA. She's the the godmother of like the punk aesthetic she dressed the sex pistols she's a legendary fashion designer who uses the runway to get across her political messages um and like one of the things that she really taught me that i've been re remembering once again is the power of shock is a power of shock value and the power of shocking people into like awareness and awakening um so honestly like when i tweet about my slutty shit or when i'm like wearing something that's really slutty or when i'm talking about sex it's like part of it is to remind people that like it's really not that serious like we're all doing it and if you're not that's totally fine but like you know like sex positivity isn't just being you know like having a bunch of sex it means supporting people's expression of what that means for them which can mean being you know like not having any sex or having a lot of sex or somewhere in between and like it's you know like for me that means just being open with my experiences and like talking about it and like supporting sex workers and like marginalized communities and you know like my queer friends and it's definitely weird but I feel really grateful that I live in LA where people don't give a fuck if my whole ass is out you know so how do we like approach our sexuality as is now regardless of what level it's at where blah blah blah. how do we approach it sacredly like how Mm. like let's let's leave that out the audience with that what does what does that mean to you i feel like the first step is admitting or recognizing honoring that sex is important to you like be like sex is something that's important to me expressing my sexuality is something that's important to me like putting that on the table and then saying, I'm going to honor it as sacred. Like I'm going to take the time to revere it and to cultivate it. Cause what do you do when something is important to you? Like think about like a friendship. Like if you have a friend who's important to you, you make time for them, you reach out for them, you're there for them as much as they are for you. Right. Like you cultivate this connection, this relationship. So you can do the same thing with your sexual self. Like you admit that it's something that you want to explore that's important to you. And you recognize that it's something that feels sacred to you and whatever expression that takes. Like I also like, I fucking hate when people say that you can't have casual sex and like be a sex switch or practice sacred sex or that you have to have a penis and a vagina. I'm like, these are, these are inherited stories from people, like you said, who are dead that like, we don't have to continue 
and that I choose to not engage with. Like I've never been in a committed relationship and I've had a lot of sex and it's all sacred to me because it's a way for me to know myself and to feel pleasure. So honoring right where you are and like just knowing that it's sacred and then finding ways to connect with yourself in that way. So like thinking of what brings you pleasure just in general is a really good way to do that, whether it's through like art or through sound or through nature and like thinking about how you can incorporate your sexuality into these things that you already have this like pleasure connection with. Um, So like for me, that can mean adorning myself in a certain way before I like masturbate or practice sex magic or um, buying myself roses and using a rose to just like touch my skin or praying to the goddess or dance or just like masturbating and allowing it to be exactly what it is and just like indulging in that like there's no one way to do it and if you're not at a point where like you feel ready to masturbate or like have sex like there's no rush like there's so many other ways to like bring that sacredness to your sexual expression whether it's through like meditation and raising energy through your body or through breath work or through just creating art and offering like But for me, like ritualizing the act of sex, whether it's sex or masturbation, most of my 99% of my sex magic practice at this time in my life is solo. Um, So I work a lot, you know, I practice mostly like solo sex magic. So um, like ritualizing your masturbation session, whether that's like lighting candles or saying a prayer or wearing something that feels good or whatever it is to get you into your body and like awaken that sexual energy, like Kundalini yoga or practicing breath work and like becoming aware of this sexual energy in your body and taking the time to feed it, like watching porn or trying new things or going on dates or like reading about things that turn you on. Like creativity is such a beautiful part of sexuality and it's such a beautiful part of magic. And I think it's such a good bridge between the two, whether it's like through creating art or through like going on dates, whatever it is. Um, One of the things that I've done that I invite others to do too is to like, especially if you're, if you're single or in relationship, but to see like your dating life or your sex life as like part of your magical practice. Not that you're necessarily like doing sex magic with people without their consent, but that you're, you're working, you're dating as the part, as a way to meet yourself more in that way like to meet yourself romantically and sexually and doing it as an offering to like to the goddess right so like for me like because your partners are reflect reflect where you are back at you like they are your mirrors so like the people that you're attracting the kinds of relationships you have there it's again it's all information that you can use to see where you're at and I think just like that shift of like having like okay, like the dates I'm going on or like my relationship with this person, like that is like an alchemical force. Like that is a part of my sex life. Like I'm going to honor that as a part of my spiritual practice. Like that automatically brings this kind of numinousness, this sacredness to that. And um, I know for myself, like that has like really using dating as a way to learn about myself has helped make my like sex magic practice a lot Um deeper but at the end of the day the only thing you need in my opinion to honor sexuality sacred is the decision to do it and the time that you take to to do that whatever that means to you whether it's yeah like I've started taking pole class like I on I reckon like for me that's like honoring the divine masculine because pole is literally just fucking phallus worship you know like there's a lot of ways to do it but your intention in this case in my opinion is like all the permission you need to do it as such I love that. I love it. That's a, it's a very witchy thing to say, my love. <laughs> it's very witchy indeed. Thank you so much for oh. coming on the show and taking the time. You are an inspiration and all my love to you. And I oh. hope that you are able to sell a billion of these books and Thank that you, you, you inseminate the world <laughs> with billions of new <laughs> sex priests and priestesses and priestesses and... <laughs> Yes, absolutely. Thank All right. you for Thank having you... me. This Are was a kidding? treat. This was this this was a dream come true. I can now take it off my modern witch bucket list. <laughs> All right, Thank everybody. you. Stay tuned. We'll be right back after the break. Okay, so there you have it. That was my episode with Gabriella Hurstic. She is just 
freaking awesome. She's just a delight. And uh, again, one of my favorite people online uh, to follow. So if you're on Twitter, you should definitely be following her. Uh, I will say I had to cut out like almost 40 minutes because we just kept talking and we, and which was great. And normally that put me in the like, do I want this to be a two parter? Do I, but it was actually really juicy. So I decided that instead I was just going to cut it and give it to the Patreon subscribers. Just to let you know, we talk about like losing our virginities. Um, my story's just insane. So that's like a whole thing. Um, but you know, I don't, I don't know. I was like, is that public? Is that not public? So I put it behind a little bit of a curtain. So if, if you want those things, you should definitely check out the Modern Witch Patreon, uh, because they get the, they get all the interviews unfiltered. So that might be something to check out if you're into that kind of thing. And again, we get pretty intimate, uh, with, with the parts that I ended up cutting out. Anyway, thank you to Gabriella Herstic. Uh, just one of my absolute, again, I love her. I gush over. She's amazing. Um, please go check her out. I, she is somebody who's doing some really cool work and I think it's just a really wonderful breath of fresh air. So anyway, check her out, check out modernwitch.com. I will see you next week. We have the amazing Thumper Forge, and we're going to be talking about some, well, you know, we, it gets weird because it's Thumper. So anyway, all right, we'll see you next week. There are forces at work here, dark, incomprehensible forces. Satyrs Incorporated.